Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to the weekend recap number 21 of our official series, where we watch some moments from this past weekend stream on our server with some of my commentary. That said, I got a lot of feedback from our last video that I was extremely helpful. So I want to take a similar approach that I took with our last video and focus more on lead lines for drift trains. As always, Discord and server links are in the description. I would highly recommend watching the entire video. But if there's any specific tracks you want to learn about, timestamps with the track names will be in the description and playback bar. Oh, and also one last thing. I actually made some adjustments to the sound. Uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but it didn't have sound for other cars around me. I was kind of fiddling with that in and outside of this video, or sorry, rather, uh, in different areas of this video. So uh, you should be able to start hearing some actual car audio outside of mine. So that I think that should be cool. Anyways, that being said, let's get right into it. So we start off our Friday session at Sim... Simsutu car, Simsoto car. Uh, now this is a very interesting track. We're gonna watch this first run here. Now, really the key things here is this line to the lead up on this entry. I think a lot of people don't really realize how crucial it is to set you up right for that corner. And in general, this track has really deceiving corners. What do I mean by that? It will look like you're gonna be taking the right line, but I'm not sure if it's the elevation changes or whatnot but you'll end up going a lot further in uh, and deep into corners than you really mean to. So that's one thing to keep in mind as you're trying out this track. And another thing that I should probably say here too, um, the track is so wide that you could really take so many different lines. I've only had it maybe two or three sessions on this track, but the more that I drive it, I'm still trying to learn exactly what makes the best sense for that forward momentum on trains. But I think generally we're getting a lot closer and so Again, I'm never going to say I'm the expert on this, but hopefully this thought process of what I'm looking at and thinking will help you guys there uh, out there watching, of course. So here we're looking for the lead up. We, I like to try to not just straighten when I can. So I'm trying to maintain drift, even though it's a little shallow outside line. You can really run this um, on the outside or in the mid. And then right here in almost a lot of these corners, you're just going to throw it in really and trust, especially with the swarm cars, trust the forward grip. Uh, I guess maybe a little bit of that side by two to power through and continue through that corner. There you can see a bunch of angle throwing it in. And then I like to really hug this corner, maybe a little bit more than I should, but hug that corner going on the outside. And then here, I'd like to take this inside line. Now I was, I still wasn't sure. I tried a little back and forth. Outside line just didn't feel right. And then here making a little bit of a mistake, but taking a mid, maybe arguably inside line transition to this outside or actually midline excuse me then transition here again looking for the inside corner into mid and then back to outside so let's watch it again and we'll kind of talk through it uh you know one more time of course so here again we're looking at that lead up running really close to that outside wall if we can transition boom we're trusting the grip we're trusting the angle and there you can see those two cars behind me took a little bit different of a line and it really is hard to recover that approach um, when you're just not hitting that correctly. So again, very deceiving track at some points, but you got to kind of think about where you want to put the car and again, trust in that grip. So here, looking at the wall, staying kind of close to it, taking a midline to our outside and then back to inside here. Again, thinking, uh, and I know we mentioned it last video, but again, I'm going to continue to harp on it. We want to have that forward momentum, continue the train forward every line that i take is always trying uh train oriented so yeah i could go outer on a couple areas uh, a lot deeper in some of these corners but really i'm just trying to take a forward momentum line to help and and again in my head i'm thinking hey there's a train behind me at all times i'm just trying to push forward get that forward momentum so again we're just going to see that line up to the, to the uh, outside wall and then boom um here's the chase so we have roughly i will say we want to do like three uh, lead runs and then a chase. Uh, it's a little, it depends on the track. We'll, we'll talk about it later. But here, I'm just trying to stay close. You can see this lead car taking a pretty good line, staying with him, throwing it in a little bit of shakiness there, but not a problem. We're still very close. Transition, he's taking this midline. You can see me making a mistake, but I felt like I didn't need to reset because I had that forward momentum. Still trying to stay close to him. And everyone takes this track very differently. Um, so I'm really just trying to look at how he was taking this track. I was still warming up a little bit, honestly, uh, and especially watching it back, it's kind of evident, but just trying to see what lines he's gonna take, trying to stay close to him here. It looks like 
overall kind of similar lines actually um there's a couple areas that he's going a little bit deeper than i normally do but yeah overall that's a great looking lead run and very 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 chaseable that said we now switch to a track that maybe you guys have not seen before uh this is a track that's been out for a while it's called drift mansion actually is a irl track pretty crazy uh really cool track by the way but definitely with all of our drivers uh really having a lot of performance issues i think it's just a very expensive or high pull account map and you can see there <laughs> i don't know why but the layout that we chose ended up having uh the cones and the little uh awning i think is what it's called uh, right at that corner so anyways let's talk about the lines uh, i think i added a couple more uh, like i like i said literally right before i typically want to do three leads and a chase but i did a lot more on this one just because it's a little bit shorter so let's talk about what i'm looking for so here running the outside to then go inside corner then i'm going to take this inside corner i think you can go a little bit more midline there and then another inside to set me up i'm taking a little bit out of a line right there but want to go on the outside corner on the wall transition to the outside here and then another outside and there's a lot of bumpiness you can see there on the first person view but that is actually how it feels and you kind of want to run this outside that line's not too bad to then again set you up inside and then you're going to see me a little bit more of a midline but i do lose a little bit of momentum inside line and then again i want to be running the corner here and and, and genuinely like re-watching this i can tell i'm lagging a little bit i remember it was very rough um, and actually my uh, shifter died and so i had to replace it really quick luckily i had a spare genuinely very fortunate to have a spare uh but yeah so uh, if it looks a little weird re-watching it that's probably why a little laggy but again inside we're looking for the outside corner here we're gonna run it up and then right about where it ends then we're gonna transition the outside and then another outside we're looking for the as much of this outside really we can run you'll see that the corner's not exactly like perfect of a of a shape of a circle shape i guess circular shape inside and then inside and then we're going to switch to a chase so wh what i think is really unique here is we can really see especially if you watch the track cam too and you know what i'm doing you can kind of really analyze the lines that they're taking uh and this is what i've said before right like not all the time maybe your line is not going to be great maybe there is a better line out there but this is a really cool opportunity to see hey is the lead driver taking a different line is he taking the same line taking the same line how does it feel especially here in p3 how does it feel for me uh you know obviously i can't see other people behind me but uh also like if they take a different line how is that line reacting to right you can kind of say like oh wow the train's actually really well held together you're either in like p3 or, or further back if there's a bigger train again a great opportunity i really do think uh, sincerely that you know being a good lead helps you become a good chase and being a good chase helps you become a good lead i think a lot of people focus on just one aspect uh, but both of them kind of work together and help strengthen you so you can kind of see though basically the lead here taking the same lines that we were generally taking a little bit less on the outside there but still looking pretty good very chaseable you can see the train sticking together pretty decent inside and then you can see i think it takes about a midline there so pretty cool pretty interesting to watch uh, but now we switch over to UK streets. Now there was a lot of clips, uh, that I saw that I wanted to use, but, uh, not a lot of ones where I was just purely leading. You'll actually see that a couple times throughout this, uh, video. So maybe not like the craziest trains. I was like, you know, I, I feel like I'm making like a train oriented, uh, lead slash line video. I really should probably have like a train behind me. Uh, but it's a very long track, I think overall and uh yeah and also too like there was a i'm actually going to point it out here in a second but there's a line that we typically run that i wanted to run but the server didn't really want to run that so i kind of adapted right here normally i would like to go ear transition and then circle around that right hand side area but they weren't taking it so you know i said you know what i'll just kind of follow whatever the the lobby's filling and there's another section like that i'll call it out when we get there but yeah really again like this is a very flowy track um, with these flowy, like higher speed tracks, it's very easy to get lost, uh, left behind. I could think is the word I'm looking for, uh, when you make a mistake. So it's really good to kind of judge like, oh, am I having that forward momentum? Am I, am I keeping up? If I'm not keeping up, why am I not keeping up? Things like that. Um, they're a little bit of a, a little bit of an issue. I think someone might've not just been watching. Um, like I said, I was struggling a little bit to find, uh, 
runs that I thought were good, but this is kind of what we end up. I don't want to say getting stuck with. But, you know. but anyways, let's talk about the line. So here I'm looking for the outside. You can then pull it inside right there to our right. And then here I've been actually experimenting a little bit more, just throwing an angle and then running that. It feels a little bit better. Then here, yeah, basically you can just run the outside. And you can run also a little bit more mid or inside line if you're trying to catch up without going straight line on someone. Transition here, looking for the inside uh, corner to inside corner to outside wall. Running that pretty much like that. And then transition outside, then kind of looking for a nice circular line right there. And then here again, another area where I felt like, look at that. If you look at the track cam, throwing it in, not e-braking, not left foot braking. Feels like it look uh, feels better uh, for me and also for everyone else in the train. And then that section there, we might have to come back and talk about it, but uh, it's a little weird to take. I'll kind of give you some ideas that I have. You're looking for the inside of that square transition outside. Again, trying to think about forward momentum, a little bit of uh, inside corner there. Outside here, we're looking for that mid to then inside. And then here you can kind of go either mid or outside. I think this line right here is about what I try to aim for. And then here you really want to try to like not straighten, but very, very shallow angle. It's going to help you really well to this lead up right here. And if you can take this corner without e-braking or left of braking, it will feel a lot better. But if you're having a little bit of struggles, definitely feel free to use a little bit of left foot brake here on the outside, basically on the outside right there as well. And then here inside, right at that area is where the circle would have been. And then transition, look in the inside. And then here, I kind of like to go on this outside a little bit more than we just saw. And then again, outside line and then pulling it in to the inside mm -hmm. and then setting us up for like what I would maybe argue is an inside slash midline. And then boom, back on the outside for the roundabout. And again, if you're trying to catch up, if you're lost, uh, you know, left a little bit behind, it's a good opportunity to take a little bit more shallow of a line to catch up. We're looking for the inside corner here, transition inside corner here, leading us to the outside wall. A little bit more safe there, I would say, on this run. Then transition, looking for the outside, nice circular line here. And then boom, I want to throw a lot of angle, but carry that momentum. And then you're going to see right here on this next part, I'm still not 100% sure, but if you can see, like a lot of people I think are struggling with this, it's a really tight corner. We went from a five person stack to literally just a two person stack. And I just kind of want to mention too, like, this is really like trains are, I would argue, maybe one of the harder aspects in a set. Oh, we've talked about being in the in the middle of the pack. You're going to be a lead and a chase at the same time. But if you make a mistake and you're not resetting quick enough or getting out of the way, if you're not a fan of resetting uh, fast enough, you're going to end up killing everyone that's in the train and people are not going to be very happy with you, right? So maybe just like a little TMI, but just in general, like it kind of, the point is basically that it's putting pressure on you to really drive as best as you can uh, to, to ensure that everyone has a good time and we can have a big train. So that, that pressure is sometimes nice and kind of forces you to drive uh, at your best, I guess, to say it simply. But anyways, we go to a chase now on UK streets. So uh, we're behind this nice, bright purple Corvette uh, who is also catching up to this nice, bright s15 and you can see here i actually i think i included this specifically because you can notice the vet is not being super aggressive with the ketchup and this is something i think it would be really important for people that are maybe you know trying to be in these ketchup situations if they end up in these situations you don't need to rush the you don't need to rush the lead you don't need to get, get there as quick as possible you can see very slowly he's pulling in that proximity but meanwhile you can see all of these cars behind us i mean that is an insane looking stack and he's able to just slowly catch up, make a little adjustments in the line without really affecting anyone behind him. And that's what I talk about too. You wanna to slowly roll up. You don't wanna to have, have to like go super shallow or worst case scenario, just straighten and just try to catch up to people. It's really hard once you do, if you are in a straight, you're gonna have no angle. You're gonna have a very big speed differential. So there's just a slow roll up, especially like these kind of hot lap tracks, which I think is generally most of the tracks out there. You're going to be able to catch up if you're just very consistent and maybe think about, okay, I'm going to take a little bit of shallower line here. I'm going to take a little bit of shallower line here. Nothing crazy. And there you can see someone uh, going the wrong way. I, I just really want to stress, like, thankfully, uh, somehow everyone avoided him. But when you enter a track for the first time, I think it's really important to just kind of sit there at what you might think is a starting line, see what people are doing. 
even if you want to go in the if, in the pits, you just want to maybe spectate someone, see what the lines are, try to look for the big trains. That'll give you a good indication of what the lobby's running. Just a heads up for anyone that's maybe not used to that. And you know, no offense, I know that we're all trying to learn etiquette, and a lot of public lobbies aren't like that. But I think, especially with our server, definitely a really good idea, just so you know, a what the track lines look like, what the lobby's looking like, uh, and it just kind of gives you a good idea overall, some insight of what's going on. That being said, we switch over, and sorry I'm a little bit late, to Old Tree Drift Track. So you're going to have just two leads and one chase because we did talk about this last weekend, but I still want to, again, focus on the lines, talk about the lines, and I'm going to really kind of talk through our next run here. Um, so our second chase after this, or sorry, our second lead after this first lead. And I was actually messing around a little bit with a couple deeper corner spots. I don't know if I really necessarily agree with it, but... Yeah, I was just trying to test out a little bit more. I've been really thinking about you guys while I've been driving. What lines are going to make sense? What lines maybe I can improve to try to help uh, you guys improve as well. So anyways, transition. Boom, we're here. Basically, you can take a mid to outside line, but you want to pull it in here on the inside. And then here, I've seen a lot of people go a little bit too inside there. I think you want to take that line roughly as not maybe the best example, but you want to take that little jump and then make sure you have that forward momentum. Here, you can kind of take the outside line. You can see us going a little bit heavy there. And then here, you're kind of shallow. I think this angle isn't bad. I've been really working on just like setting an angle and then going that way. And then here, you kind of want to go actually on the inside. You can see, I think I want to argue. I watched it back a couple times that it was actually my mistake. Um, I went on the mid outside line. I've seen a lot of people do that. And it caused the train to bunch instead of taking that inside line, which is what I was really looking to do. Uh, and then it caused that bunching up or uh, the yo-yoing that we've talked about in previous times. And then here inside to the outside. And then here instead of straight lining it, looking go outside. A little bit mid inside to inside. And then here's just like basically it's like a double manji. And there you go. But now we switch over to a chase position. So we just kind of talked about the lines. We're going to look at my lines. We're going to think about what the lead line is doing there. You can see taking a little bit probably a little bit too aggressive of an inside line to catch up to our now lead car and here i'm trying to watch what he's doing you can see a little bit of change of pace happening but not too bad so i'm just trying to watch him and then here's going to see what the train does and what lines he takes he's taking a mid line and look at that the line that he took looking very good train staying together very well inside line on this corner looking very good the outside line not bad not bad a little bit of uh decrease of momentum but not bad and then there you can see that outside line kind of setting them up weird i had to take a little bit different of a line to make sure that the train was going but i think the train was also looking at our lead line see what he was doing people were a little bit uncertain but again added proximity gaps to make sure that there weren't a problem so really really good uh good job and critical uh decisions being made from the train for sure but now we go to Sunrise Circuit. Um, I, I think on this one, I decided, hey, we're, we're going to do a three three lead, one chase. Um, this first run, I think right about, I want to say here, I'm going to add a little bit of extra angle. And you can see the train having to compensate for that. Now, luckily, there's some really good drivers who are able to absorb that without a problem. But that's one thing that we've talked about before. When you're about to transition, you don't want to try to add additional angle to help you in the transition realistically you want to try to stay on that angle and then if you need to maybe clutch kick um or change your throttle and that will help you out there but here's what i'm thinking when i'm taking these lines so going inside here to an inside trying to carry that forward momentum inside line outside and then here basically you can run the outside no punishment there at all uh this looks maybe more like a midline but that's pretty decent and then here inside i think you could take this different but this is how i do it inside line and i notice here i've been left foot breaking but a lot of people have been actually doing a lot better than me keeping a steady angle and just working with their throttle uh so i'm still working on it this is not a one of my greatest tracks for sure but uh just wanted to kind of give that a mention so again looking for the inside to outside i i think it's a little bit aggressive of an inside on that initiation but that's okay inside and again, we will look for inside. You can see me carrying a little bit too much angle for too long in that, I guess, like S slash Manji section. And then again, either outside or midline here. Set, it up, set us up nicely for an inside line here. 
and then again in i think you want to go inside outside inside but typically i'm inside 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 again watch out for the dirt it'll mess you up inside line not looking too bad right towards that tire wall uh i typically transition right about where that track additional area ends and then they're a lot better of a midline for me i think i still arguably would like to see that more on the outside there but again inside inside carrying that forward momentum and then again outside holding that and again maybe it's midnight i'm not sure i'd have to really honestly double check but looks like a mid slash outside then we're looking for an inside and then here's what i was saying maybe go outside or something like that but here we go outside a little bit late back to the inside having to make a lot of adjustments as you can see so just want to call out like yeah i'm definitely not perfect but there's a lot of improvements on my personal line that i can make here and then transition boom right into a, a chase position so we are now in p3 on this chase we're just going to kind of watch the uh train see what lines they're taking see how it's affecting us in p3 uh really because i wasn't feeling confident i think i was adding a little bit more proximity just in case uh genuinely this is a track i need a little bit more seat time on but just trying to stay with them there you can see them taking more of an outside line than uh i was before but then taking it on the inside near the end to the outside to the inside to the window of the wall to the outside to the inside and then to the tire wall here and then yeah it looks like some people take this entry a little bit different i, I don't know i'm starting to uh debate my whole thing about not trying to straighten uh it seems like it might be the better setup on this track i'm not really sure but anyways inside looking for an inside and you can see the lead doing a pretty good job actually overall with these line choices uh maybe arguably better than me for sure train's looking pretty healthy we got a five snack sticking together making a little bit of mistake on my side i think i see a little bit of lag happening so any uh anything i can do other than blame myself you know i'm just kidding but it does look like it's a little bit laggy and then again you can see their tire drop on the dirt kind of upset the car lost a little bit of momentum myself so yeah really watch out for those dirt spots there uh they'll kind of ruin your day but now we switch over to ebisunishi Missouri. i believe that's true and this track i remember being able to drive really well uh i feel like i do need to revisit these lines again but let, let's talk just generally i think this is a pretty straightforward track kind of simple but also very fun uh definitely again just because it's simple doesn't mean that it's easy right uh but anyways this line i was trying to work on uh basically you're entering here i've seen a lot of people try to take this like straight road course i'm not too sure but basically you want to look for that patch be on that patch a little bit outside and then you're going to aim for that inside pocket there more of a midline you can maybe run it a little bit more outside i think that was a little bit aggressive of the inside inside and then this honestly you could probably run more mid outside too um and again i, I really genuinely i'm trying to be better at this track so here's the initiation that i've seen right there that seems like it's the best initiation uh for this track personally and then basically you want to run the inside line which will help you set up for this next entry right here you can see like it almost feels like floaty that floaty feeling i, I think is about uh a, is rather a good indication that you're running the right line at least it has been for me and i think i have a couple i hope i have a couple additional runs but maybe not there might just be chases at this point but it'll be a good opportunity to see let's see all right yeah we have one more lead run so again running the inside line trying to keep that forward momentum up going for that patch right there pretty good outside this inside looking at that as our point and then transition more of a midline to that inside white line to an inside and then again you don't have to go inside here i think i have a habit of doing that but you can go midline or arguably even outside to the rumble strips that's actually a pretty good line that's kind of the line i'd be looking for and right here again transition i think i took a little bit too much of a midline you can kind of see me lose a little bit of momentum and i and i think that's the killer and you can kind of see a little bit of weird of a setup right there on those rumbles we're looking for this inside and again either outside or arguably midline to this inside line where that white line is the inside and then back to a mid slash inside line here all the way to the rumble and boom there we go a little bit better a little bit better I feel like every time i get on this track a lot, a lot of uh, improvements that i can make but now we go to a chase position we're actually going to be here in p3 and we're going to look at this altezza in front of us and see how he's taking the track 
Looks like it's similar to the outside to that inside a little bit more aggressive than I was, but it actually sets you up pretty well. And there you can see midline to an inside and then here into an inside to an outside. And that actually might be a better line. It looks like it flowed pretty nice, but let's see another run here and look at his initiation. So big faint entry. You can see me struggling. I really wasn't sure what to do with my hands basically. And actually you can see there, he's taking more of a midline that he did set up pretty proper on that rumble and then boom taking a, a more aggressive rumble inside to this outside back into a mid to an inside to an inside outside so he might actually have a better line there i'm not too sure uh, again it's another track that i probably need a little bit more seat time on to be kind of valuable on so i think we have a couple more runs i just kind of wanted to show this I've, I've just seen a lot of people take this differently and i've seen a lot of people struggle on this track so i thought it would be good to kind of look at it and especially with a couple different leads uh and not just my lead so you see me there making a huge mistake uh but anyways hopefully the next run doesn't have me just absolutely throwing uh but we're gonna watch this white s15 in front of us see how he takes it gonna be a little bit similar actually to the alteza as you can see on that lead up and he's taking maybe a little bit more of a mid to inside line. Again, it looks like he's looking for that little strip right there to the outside. We'll see how he takes this right at the edge of the rumble. Not as aggressive as we saw in the Alteza. And then there you can see I went on the inside, but he actually was mid inside. So two pretty good drivers taking similar lines. I would say that maybe their lines actually might be better here, but you'll have to try it and see how it works out for you for sure. Uh, again, Definitely, definitely not going to say I'm an expert on this track for sure. Uh, that said, we switch now over to Saturday on Shadow Valley. You guys have seen this before. I actually feel like I didn't have any lead runs. My, I'm not really sure. I don't remember 100% when I was editing what my thought process was. I think I just genuinely didn't have any lead runs, bro. Uh, but yeah, so we'll kind of though, even though we're in a chase position, we're going to look at what these drivers are doing and i think this is again a good opportunity when we're in these chases look at p1 look at maybe p2 p3 and see how everyone's doing and see what uh maybe like approaches or ways that they take certain corners affects the other people behind them you can see me there pushing for prox but uh maybe a little bit too hard kind of pushing him forward a little bit as well and then now we go into a p2 position chasing this e46 so we're going to be looking for, am I matching his angle? Am I too far or too far back? Uh, sorry, too far ahead or too far back in positioning. And we want to make sure that my transition timing is matching our lead here too. So that's something I've been focusing on, but all of those things, uh, those three things specifically, I think all kind of play into each other too. If you're not in the right position, it's hard to have the right transition uh, timing and if you don't have the right transition timing it's hard to maintain that proximity uh, and then also I, I would add you know the angle that you have if it's too shallow too wide it's gonna end up causing a lot of problems so yeah I feel like Shadow Valley is a lot longer of a track but I feel like we just straight flew through that but we have seen this map before so hopefully that's helpful and one more chase so again we're watching the track cam basically you want to run this outside then pull into the midline right there as you can see p1 doing i was a little too close you can see me losing a little bit of proximity here then run this white line basically all the way up you don't want to go outside that if you can help it and then here i've been taking on the inside but you can see he's taking out actually a modified out mid to outside line which works very well not a problem at all everyone's sticking very well together and transition basically running the wall as confident as you are or want to be near that wall transition inside you can see the vet going inside to outside ish but actually the lead going a little bit different too so again another line change uh that actually can work too right looks like it it worked actually pretty well but we switch over now to a new track from our boys at clutch gang drift cafe <clears throat> i think i need a little bit of water one second so again another very simple track uh, but a very, uh, it's very similar and, you know, same creator, by the way, but Segoya Park, very similar where every line that you take, every line that you enter or exit with is going to help you for the next corner. So let me talk to you about my thoughts. Uh, I think I have the right amount of, uh, runs for this. So outside to outside 
Now, I've seen a lot of people mess this part up. You want to go inside and then really run that outside. It's not the best example right there. And then inside to inside. And then you want to go outside. And you can see the car behind me struggling because they're just not following the lines. And, and it's a new track, so I think we're all just kind of learning. No, no uh, disrespect, just kind of pointing it out a little bit. Because I know some of you out there might be struggling too. It's totally okay. Just want to kind of really think about your line choices here. It's, it's going to make the track a lot easier or harder depending on if you're taking the right lines or not. But let me just talk about the full lines again one more time. So outside to outside to outside. Looking for that inside spot. Running that outside there. Could have been a little bit more aggressive on the angle. Inside. Inside. To that maybe midline transition inside to outside it's not terrible i don't love that line inside to inside that sets you up to this midline actually and then transition to outside run that pull in a little bit near the end it sets you up for this corner which is looking like it's inside and then inside all the way to this outside area outside and then transition here boom so again, let's watch the lines that everyone's taking here. We're going to see how they're approaching it. I think you can watch back and forth between the first person view and the top track camera here. So outside line, midline, arguably inside to midline. And if you take that on the outside, it will ruin your day. Then mid to outside, it looks like transition a uh, little bit of a mistake on my part inside line this outside slash midline and then again looks like they're taking it outside 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 and then again they took more of a midline actually which is totally okay um continuing that forward momentum there by our p1 p2 inside line sets you up to go outside here and then a midline to inside is what i'm probably going to take and there it is and there you can see me losing a little bit of momentum and look right there behind me two people messed up and one actually had to even reset because of my mistake it is a little rough to watch back but yeah mistakes do happen but again your lines that you make uh or you, that you take and the mistakes that you rather don't make are uh really important and crucial in these train situations but a fun track if you haven't driven it before the brand new track that came out definitely would suggest driving it now we switch over to bahuku highland circuit now I really do have to apologize. I swear I checked to make sure that the track cams are working and I swear that they were working and then somehow uh, they didn't work, uh, I guess. So uh, my bad. I did think it was still very valuable to add a couple runs for this track. Uh, and I want to kind of explain why too, because I was struggling immensely on this track. I actually remember disliking this track immensely, uh, but the more comfortable I got, the more that I understood the lines, the more that the track opened actually up to me. So. You're kind of going for that inside little rumble to this outside little rumble. Then there, that outside little rumble we're aiming for. Run up there. So this is up to the inside rumble there. Outside rumble there. Another outside rumble. You can kind of see a, a pattern emerging here. Outside rumble. And then trying to stay forward momentum as best I can. A little bit of an outside uh, corner. And then look inside to another inside. A little bit of a mess up on me. And then you can kind of get near that wall. You want to continue that forward momentum and then boom you kind of want to go and throw it a little bit i had been pulling a little bit of e-brake it seems to help me up uh help me out in that initiation and then again we want to look for inside rumble outside rumble outside rumble transition outside rumble uh outside to looking for that inside rumble to guide us outside rumbles running outside rumble we we're kind of running and then outside with a little bit of e-brake there too uh and then the inside rumble that actually looked pretty good and then transition, looking for that inside rumble. I'm not sure if they're rumble strip, it's what they kind of look like it. Rumble strip inside, a little hop over, continue that forward momentum and transition. And then the initiation is going to have a little bit of e-brake there. And then a big kind of like, not a backy, but it kind of feels like that when you're driving anyway. But here we're going to switch over to a chase position. We have actually our boy Scooby in the lead. And Scooby actually gave me a lot of good tips for this track. And you're going to probably see here the line choice that he takes are going to be a lot better. And right here on this transition, he mentioned, hey, I do a little bit of an e-brake, a little bit of a crank, not a hold. And it was interesting. I was trying out holding in like the different, I guess, like milliseconds or seconds of the e-brake actually made a really big difference. The more I held the e-brake on the downhill slope, 
The more I was going way too far outside and it was just not setting me up properly for that corner or pulling me too far out of the drift, you kind of got to remember if maybe you actually don't know, an e-brake is typically going to pull your car backwards and slow it down, where a left foot brake is going to help you to maintain or stay in the angle and rather maybe the spot that you're in when you're drifting. So maybe think about that. And this was a really good example of that, where when I pulled too long on this e-brake, uh, depending on the approach for that downhill, it was setting me up really, really weird uh, every time I was doing it. So there you can see me holding a little bit more e-brake than uh, I typically was. But again, the context and the condition of what was happening, that seemed to make the most sense. A little bit more of a yank right there on the chase position. And then here, we actually transitioned to another lead, also by one of our friends, uh, Yasko. So I thought it'd be nice to see both of these drivers were doing very well on this track. Just kind of see, is there any difference in their lines? Is there any difference with their approach? You're going to see a little bit of e-brake action there from Yasko as well, me making it a big mistake. I think the clips were actually a little bit out of order. This was a chase before uh, Scooby's, actually, but um, anyway. But yeah, we're going to kind of see how he's taking this. So transition, a little bit of e-brake. Why do we know there's an e-brake? We're looking at his rear tires, and we can see that they just locked up. And then he takes a lot more aggressive of a outside line here. A little bit less of an aggressive inside, but probably arguably the same. Same idea for this area too. Outside to the inside, to the outside, to the wall. Okay, I'll stop with the reference. Transition, a little bit of e-brake there. You can see again, locking tires up. He lost a little bit of momentum, so maybe pulled it a little bit too long, but I was so far back, it really didn't matter uh, if he lost any momentum there, honestly. And then transition. Keeping that forward momentum up. And then kind of the same thing we've been seeing. A little bit of e-brake. And then he's just a mad lad. And they're finally doing a little bit better maintaining that outside drift. Looked pretty good, actually. Looked pretty good. Uh, but now we switch over to rhythm and flow. We have seen this track. It is kind of a long track. So I have only two leads and one chase. So let's just kind of talk about it uh, in general. With elevation changes, we want to think about forward momentum. And here's a spot where people make a mistake. I like to go a little aggressive on the inside corner to set you up for this. Some people I've seen go try to go outside and it just is going to take your momentum away a little bit too much. Your speed, your forward momentum speed, a little bit too much. And I see a lot of bunching in that section. Uh, something to maybe keep in mind and think about as you're driving. But a little Manji action, looking for that inside zone. And then I mentioned, I believe last video, I've been going a little bit aggressive on the outside zone right there, or area to the wall here, transition. And then we want to really run the wall as close as we can. I would say this is a pretty tame version of that. But here for me personally, I like to go mid or inside line here to an inside line here. Mid, maybe let's say midline actually. And then looking at inside here, right? Inside here, again, carrying that forward momentum up. And, and maybe again, arguably it can be a little bit too aggressive, but transition and this corner is deceptive. So you kind of want to go mid slash inside line here, not run the outside. The outside will take you outside uh, and then some, and then off track basically. But here, transition, looking for that inside corner to kind of guide me through this corner. Then looking for the outside white line, which a little bit could have gotten more, but it's not bad. Setting me up pretty nice for this corner, uh, or sorry, for the entry transition. And then again, you kind of want to run near that wall, if not midline, worst case. And then we go back to our mid slash inside line. Pretty much in a nutshell. But here we switch over to a chase position. We're here in P4. So we're going to look to see, do they have that forward momentum? So you can see a little bit of that outside line taking out the momentum little bit of static creating the train uh i got a little bit of contact but we're trying to stay cool we're trying to stay smooth we're gonna catch up we're not going too crazy a little bit more of an inside line here to catch in and boom we're already there you can see me actually a little bit too aggressive uh getting a little too close to our p3 but staying with them our p uh p5 was uh very receptive and watching what was happening thankfully and then here just kind of following their line you can see a lot of people struggle with this section but i really think that that line that i've kind of mentioned a few times now going to set you up for a lot of success on that corner and when you hit that line right especially that entry it's a it's a really nice feeling so but definitely recommend uh maybe revisiting your lines if you're struggling with this track but now we switch over to clutch kickers now i added kind of a lot of runs on this one man um now just can you look at this train dude 
I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven drivers in front of us. We have, I think, five drivers behind us. That puts us on P8 uh, with like almost a 12 stack. I maybe my math is rough. But basically, when I'm in this position, and I, I kind of want to show this because it's really cool. First off, shout out to everyone that was uh, driving today. And actually, actually this, this weekend, uh, genu genuinely. Uh, but really like, yeah, I could be a little bit more aggressive. And you were maybe like, dude, why aren't you like on his door, bro? That'd be sick. But really like, I want to make sure I'm not going to be the problem on this train. And with so many people, you know, none of us have all driven together. I think, you know, some of us have, but there's a, a couple new drivers in the train. We're not all sure how each other's going to react or how do we're going to take lines. So when you're ever unsure, it's always okay, I think, to add proximity. As long as that it, you're in an engaged chase, it's kind of speculative, I'd maybe argue. But if it doesn't look like you're really chasing someone and you're just kind of out there throwing it around and there just happens to be a train in front of you, it, again, it's kind of subjective, but maybe you might understand what I'm thinking about. If you don't really look like you're engaged and following the train lines and stuff like that, um, then you're probably, you're probably too far back. And especially if you're like really delayed on transitions. You can see my transition is a little bit delayed, but if you're like really transition, uh, late transitions everywhere, that might be an easy indicator to say, hey, a little bit too far back, man. Push up a little bit hard, take a little bit uh, tight corners and just catch up. And now we find ourselves in a, yet another big train. Looks like we're P7 roughly, I think. And again, we've talked about this track and if you've watched the last series, uh, I definitely would recommend it. We're revisiting our lines. There might be tracks that we've talked about today, but also maybe not talked about today. Really good video. It's still very valuable, very, very fresh still too. But now we switch over to Still Yard. This is a C Toretto track. Now it was kind of hard to find the clips I was really looking for on this session. I'm actually not quite sure why, uh, but this is a very fun track but it does have what I consider to be technical checks throughout the track that I don't think a lot of people are maybe aware of or really thinking about. And again, let me take a drink of water. I guess I'm dying over here. Sorry, guys. Okay. But that being said, so this corner, you don't want to go too crazy. You kind of want to go for a midline that sets you up for the outside corner. Take this on the outside. Transition on the inside that sets you up for the outside. And that wall to mention while we're just kind of going through this I'll do call. It's a little bit better on the next run. But that that corner, I've seen a lot of people like just aim for the wall, and I think it sets you up in a bad position. And same with this one. This actually tightens up. That wall actually comes towards you, and I don't think a, people, a lot of people realize that. And you really want to throw it in, keep that forward, forward momentum uh, going. And then here's the same thing. And I like to actually aim for that section to our right, right there for our transition spot. And then here, uh, maybe a little bit of a tip. You can let off the throttle just a little bit and still stay in angle. And it feels like it helps the car stay engaged while allowing you to take a little bit longer of a line i was struggling to think it was my gearing but i don't think it is but anyways let's talk about the corners so inside corner to the outside again you want to take that to try to carry your forward momentum uh or your momentum forward excuse me adjust my line a little bit because i wasn't sure if he's going to reset thank you he did and then here you can run the outside maybe a little bit aggressive on my side uh for the outside line then again right here mid to then set you out nicely for this outside corner or the wall rather outside to the inside transition to the outside i think i was running a little bit more of a midline i, I do tend to take a little bit more uh less deep corners I'm trying to say those things without sounding sus is difficult and then transition here and then again we want to carry that momentum we want to carry that momentum which we did and then boom we pop up transition and then we stay in it but now we switch to a chase position and we're going to kind of just watch and see how the train does and see what lines that they're taking. You see a pretty big stack of OTM in the front. And this corner, man, I, I really wish I could give you some advice, but I'm still learning it. That corner or that line that I took doesn't seem terrible. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still not quite sure of what the, the proper line is there. But we're just trying to stay with our P4 here. But we're also, uh, it's probably not obvious, but watching this myself back. I'm watching P3. I'm watching that little group up front see what they're doing take an inside line here that's still chaseable to a mid you can see my lines changing quite a bit so i'm just trying to make sure i have that proximity while still being chaseable potentially for people behind me again always driving like there's a stack of cars behind me and then transition here 
meant to kind of set you up automatically for the outside line. And there you can see that momentum just got killed and it kind of struggled and, and it kind of hurt for him to recover on that line. And that's kind of one of the things that I want to just showcase. That's why that line choice is going to be really important on this track. And then here we have Scooby and Yasko in P1, P2 respectively. And here Scooby taking a pretty good looking line. I wasn't copying it unfortunately, but that looked like a pretty good line for that forward momentum to continue. Taking an outside line here, but nothing too crazy. Transition to this outside line. And again, not going to the gray strips, just staying right close to it. You can see there me making a big mistake. But again, mid to outside, to the inside, to the outside. And I think I have to take some responsibility for um, our P4. Or I think maybe it's P5 having to reset because I've made a massive mistake. Transition here, kind of towards the wall. Transition here, midline that sets you up to be basically on the outside. And then that outside line from P1 looking really nice, actually. A really good line from him. After that, we did have another track, but uh, it was kind of, uh, just to be honest, a little scuffed. There was uh, a lot of choose your own line scenarios, so I didn't really feel like it was conducive. And this video is also, I could already tell, running pretty long, so um, I cut it out. Apologies. It's auto drum just draws uh, <laughs> not even close, I'm sure. But we'll, we'll hopefully revisit that track and we'll talk about the lines. We, we were literally trying to figure out what lines made sense for that track. It's a long story. But anyways, let's not talk about that. Let's focus on this. We're on Villain Sportsland. So we're going to transition here. I typically like to run this like outside line. And then here I've noticed you want to go inside again, carrying that forward momentum. And again, I've been a little bit hesitant to say, oh, I don't want to straighten. But here I think it actually might be the right call. And then basically using this white line on the outside as my guide, looking for this inside to transition on, holding that inside to carry the forward momentum. Transition, look for the inside corner to hold the momentum again. Transition, inside corner again. Transition on the inside corner, set up for the inside corner for the momentum. Transition, run the outside. I mean, it's a lot of inside corners, but this is, I believe, supposed to be similar to Mihan. So these inside corners are going to be very crucial to carry that forward momentum and to set up you, set up well for your next uh, line. So boom, transition. Looking for that outside line, that white line to guide us through this corner here. You really got to trust the car and the grip that it has. Transition, running that inside line. A little bit of an issue right there on my side. Inside line. Train able to keep in, no problem. Inside line. Or sorry, inside corner. Transition, inside corner, inside corner. And then here, outside. Transition. Boom. Again, outside line. Not super aggressive. You don't have to be. But here again, look for the inside corner. Run the inside corner to set you up for this outside. You could probably straighten here and not be like me. Transition. Or sorry, initiation probably. They're a little bit of a tap. Going a little bit too far out, but still saving it. Still making it salvageable. Inside corner to inside corner here. And then uh, obviously it's not very repetitive, but uh, inside corner. Transition on that inside corner. Inside corner here. Transition. And then boom, we want to be on this outside. So we'll move over to a chase. So we want to see, we have our P1 and P2 in front of us. We're going to see how they take the lines in comparison to ours. So you can see a little bit more of a straight from them. And because I was not straightening, you can see me losing a ton of proximity. And that's a great call out uh, and I'll own that too. Like I should really be following the lines that they choose. Even if I don't think that I want to straighten there, I think that I should have that tool set and I really should be trusting in what line that they're taking by me not taking the lines that they're setting up for me to take, I end up actually being kind of arguably a detriment to the train, um, low-key setting them up for failure, really. I mean, it's kind of aggressive, but it really is like that. So anyways, transition inside. You can see me a little bit better on the straighten, but you look at all that proximity gap that I generated because I wasn't on the lines. But here, trying to stay close and recoup that proximity taking a little bit aggressive line, but nothing too crazy that isn't chaseable. Inside to inside. And now let's just watch our P1 and P2. I think there's one more run here on villains. Let's see what they run. So they're looking on the outside, outside line transition, inside line like we talked about, outside straight and full. Oh, actually, maybe not full straight in there. Initiation looks like 
He's going a little bit, not shallow, but not aggressive on that white line, which is really, really not a problem at all. Inside line, you can see me make a mistake there. To the mid, I would say maybe a mid line there too. Inside to inside. So it's just, it's just such small of a track. You really have no option but to kind of run the same line. It just seems like the initiation area is a little bit different for everyone. But that said, we switch over to BHS Drift Playground. I'm going to take a sip of water, sip of water really quick. All right. So basically this track is very beneficial in the fact that these outside corners are really going to guide you and all these different like outside zones inside touch and go all those areas on this track are genuinely helpful for your line choices and uh this is a very long track actually but i think i included a lot of clips because i really wanted to talk about this track i think it is a very enjoyable track especially on the swarm pack it has enough power to get through these areas it feels still uh you know arguably like pro and pro pro spec type of situation but these lines are going to dictate whether you enjoy this track or not and i think it'd be really helpful to kind of talk about it so i think i might have done three leads two chases if i remember correctly but let's talk about it here <clears throat> so here you want to run the outside line no problem watch out for those tires they seem to want to grab you and then here outside corner to set you up to run the outside corner here a little bit of e-brake and that line right there is really nice it's going to set you up for that inside touch and go which it looks like it did pretty well inside to then now we run we want to run full outside Could have been a little bit deeper on my side but that's okay transition again we're trying to set ourselves up for this outside line which we're looking pretty decent in and then mid to outside transition again we want to run that as best as we can and then here you really want to aim for this inside touch and go and then outside i think there is like a, an outside zone there to this inside touch and go i'm not sure if it is outside touch and go but anyway inside corner right there to that spot and you can see like every time we hit these little spots that are indicated on the track that's really setting us up really well for each of these corners actually and then they're a very aggressive outside line which actually looks pretty decent transition looking for the inside touch and go which we hit a little aggressively but no problem and then again outside zone not crazy angle but enough to stay drifting it's really not that shallow but sometimes it feels a little shallow and then boom outside to this inside pocket looking for that inside touch and go inside corner to set us up for the outside we want to run full outside zone and there we go looking a lot better on the outside zone transition looking for this outside zone we init we initiate that section pretty decent running a midline kind of mid outside line uh then here looking pretty healthy again carrying our forward momentum this is a flowy track so we're going to carry forward momentum inside go inside touch and go outside touch and go inside touch and go really want to carry speed through that section or it's going to hurt you inside touch and go i'm pretty sure those are touch and goes outside to set us up looking to set us up for this in or sorry outside zone running it pretty aggressively but looks pretty good pulling in a little bit pulling in again to then get to this inside touch and go transition and again outside zone full is really what we're looking for i came out of that a little bit early actually and then here you're not monging right away you're just boom setting yourself up for that initiation that corner spot is perfect and you can see that line right there looked really healthy looked really healthy but now we switch over to a chase position we got our friend scoopster in the lead and we're gonna watch what lines he's taking he took these lines and really this track overall i think pretty well we want to make sure or kind of look to see if i'm mimicking his angle transition times and the zone that he's going towards touch and go no problem outside touch and go no problem inside a little bit shallow but still pretty good overall inside touch and go right on top of it i'm assuming he's looking for this outside which he looks like i think he is actually and then boom outside perfectly set up for that outside zone actually that looked crazy and then taking a little bit different of a line there to set him up for that inside touch and go but you can see a little bit shallow actually um and then a little bit shallow and i think a lot of people take that shallow genuinely because I, I don't know if there's like a collision issue but yeah they seem to just grab your car and and send you straight to the shadow realm and then boom 
uh, inside it and kind of the same thing. So you can see both of our lines looking pretty similar. So uh, maybe his execution actually might be a little bit cleaner, uh, to be honest. There's a couple cooler runs though, but I thought it'd be nicer to see again in the spirit of trains, at least having a couple people uh, involved and not just me and Scooby throwing it down. I think we ended up going a little bit over stream time on this track, but uh, it was just really enjoyable. And I was just trying to push myself uh, to be better on the chase. Cause you can see the chase is looking a little wobbly on my side, at least to me. But yeah, man, if you can believe it, dude, that's, uh, that's almost an hour, dude. A little bit long of a video, but hopefully this is really helpful if it has been helpful for you please let me know if you want to continue to see a little bit more emphasis on the lead lines um or just lead or just lines in general maybe um please let me know too i want to do videos that are helpful and valuable to everyone watching but that said thank you guys for watching thank you so much for being here again discord server links are in the description we will be on friday and saturday i hope to catch you guys there Later.